Hello, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today I'm going to be taking you through yet another game from the Tata Steel Masters Tournament. And this is one between the USA number one player, the world number two player, Fabiano Caruana, and a Chinese player by the name of Yu Yang Yi. Uh, Yu Yang Yi, a very strong 2700 plus grandmaster, and has been for some time now. And so we'll see how Fabi uh, managed to approach this game to create some chances. Started with e4, e5, knight f3, and Yu Yang Yi plays knight f6. Now, if you know anything about Fabiano Caruana, you'll know that he has employed the Petrov to great success in his own game, in his own games. However, Yu Yang Yi, no uh, newbie to the Petrov either. He's been playing this for some time now, and so it makes sense that he would do no different against Fabi. Fabi chose this line with d4. Uh, black captures this e pawn that white neglected to defend. And now, after bishop d3, hitting this knight, we see d5, knight takes e5, knight d7. Uh, white simply castles here, which is a bit of a sideline uh, by Fabi. The main move is simply knight takes d7. We see knight e5, d takes e5. Now, knight c5 from black looking to pick up this light squared bishop. And we see bishop e3 from Fabi. Now c6 from Yu Yang Yi. And f4 is Fabi's choice. And this is a bit of a new move from Fabi. f4 so early on uh, commits to a lot. Uh, you see a lot of beginners uh, and a lot of amateur players commit to f4 very, very early on. But you should know that it really does come with some downsides. One huge downside is that in any endgame, the second rank is going to be a lot weaker with this f-pawn on f4. The f-pawn provides a lot of shelter for this king and for the other king's side pawns from f2. Uh, additionally, you'll see this diagonal also come under fire in, in a lot of positions here by playing f4. So you do have to be very careful when you commit to this move, but Fabi uh, was looking for a fight, and f4 is a move that you play when you want to fight. Knight takes d3. Uh, black does capture this bishop. We now see g6, aiming to control this light square before uh, Fabi pushes all the way through with f5. Knight c3. Uh, b6, looking to control the c5 square as well. Rook a d1, bishop f5. Whoops, I'm sorry. Rook a d1, bishop g7, b4, fighting for the c5 square. Bishop f5, queen e2, queen c8. And we've kind of arrived at uh, uh, our middle game position. So there are some features to this, to this position that are pretty interesting. Uh, I think Fabi definitely won the opening battle here. Uh, I don't think it's fair to say that black is, is much worse here, if he's worse at all. But Fabi kind of has all of the ideas. And it's especially highlighted by uh, his next move. Of course, black made a threat. Fabi plays h3, controlling this g4 square. And now black gets castled. So what do I mean by saying Fabi has all of the ideas? Well, he has ideas on the queen side, which we'll come to find out. This structure is not the most stable. It's, it's open to, to being poked at, being prodded, and some weaknesses might come out of it. As well as the king side, Fabi has ideas of playing things like g4 and f5 and going after the king. So with ideas on both sides of the board, it can be hard to, to balance uh, for the black player. And that's kind of what happened in the game. Uh, Fabi started with g4, moving this bishop back to e6. And now after b5, Fabi is really looking to attack this structure. Like I said, it's open to being poked at. And b5 is really a move that pokes, pokes at the sore spots in, uh, in black structure. Of course, if this pawn moves to c5, you're simply giving up this pawn on d5. So, Yu Yang Yi doesn't touch the queen side, instead plays f5 himself, looking to concretely stop Fabi from expanding uh, on the king side with his f5 break. Fabi plays pawn takes f6 on passant, bishop takes f6, and now bishop d4 is, is Fabi's classy choice here. And while it doesn't look like much, by trading off these dark squared bishops, as is done in the game, you're left with this bishop versus this knight. And this is actually not a comfortable imbalance at all for black. Uh, all it takes is this one pawn stuck on the d5 light square 
for this bishop to be significantly worse than, uh, than this knight on c3. And because of that, uh, black actually made some concessions here pretty early on. I do want to mention a tactic. Uh, black cannot play the move c5 here. Uh, of course, if the rook were to move out of the way and black could play d4, this would be very, very advantageous, solving all of black's problems, putting these pawns in dark squares, and this bishop would be powerful on the open diagonal. But white has the nice intermezzo, knight takes d5, and if you dare to capture my rook, I will fork your king and queen. So no can do on c5. Instead, we see pawn takes b5 with the idea that now, if you want to take my d-pawn, I'll simply capture your knight. Uh, so we see pawn takes b5, and the knight actually recaptures on this side, so that this bishop can't trade itself off. And now black has a few options to try to maintain equality here. Uh, one of which is simply playing a move queen c6, with the idea being, okay, I'll have a worse bishop, but I only have this one weakness on d5, I don't think it's enough for you to try to win. This is one way of playing, but this is a very, very uncomfortable way of playing. It's one that you won't see strong players opt for very, very often. Strong players hate having this positional deficit. Uh, you know, they want to solve these problems and get to a position that they know they can play with activity and play comfortably for, for a draw or, or more. And so because of that, Yu Yang Yi chooses this move, Bishop D7, which I think is a really good choice. Uh, it does give up this pawn on D5, but it solves the problem of this bishop, and white has to spend some time collecting this pawn and reorganizing his pieces. So we see rook takes d5, bishop b5, rook takes b5, this queen comes into c3, eyeing some weaknesses, rook b3 defends laterally, we see queen c5 check, and maybe this is where Yu Yang Yi actually missed his chance to equalize. Simply queen d4 check, uh, threatens to pick up this pawn, and if white wants to keep it, he has to play a move like queen e3. And double rook endgames are well known for being uh, very, very drawn. And I think Yu Yang Yi has excellent drawing chances, and this position is actually just a dead draw uh, with good play. But instead, we see queen c5 check, which does not attack the f4 pawn, so white has this option of king g2. Now, after some maneuvering, we see rook e8, queen d2, rook e4, once again, hitting this f-pawn. This is kind of the weakness in white's camp. Uh, rook f2 is Fabi's choice, overprotecting this pawn to free up this queen a little bit. Queen c6 makes some threats. Uh, king g3 steps out of these threats. Simply rook c4, now eyeing this c-pawn as well. But Fabi is starting to organize. And that's very, very dangerous. Uh, I was talking a lot earlier about the weakness uh, created by f4 along this se or second rank. Uh, notably, black also played f5, and in this game, that is the weakness that counts. The seventh rank is very, very weak, and this is how Fabi manages to create enough play to uh, play for a win. We see rook f7 trying to defend this seventh rank. Simply rook d6 uh, shakes loose this queen, and after queen c5, uh, Fabi does finally commit to uh, a break. Uh, here, you, you saw both players kind of maneuvering around with their pieces, but the fact of the matter is, as long as this weakness on f4 and c2 kind of stands, it's going to be difficult for Fabi to, to mount enough pressure to really uh, create some meaningful threats. So because of that, he plays a pawn break, and that pawn break is f5. And this is the move that, that really shows Fabi fighting for a win here. By playing f5, you're trying to break up the remainder of black's kingside, and kind of go for the throat. Uh, and this is something that is, is very, very uh, useful to use in your own games. Uh, just because you're up a pawn doesn't mean you should try to trade into an end game where you can use that pawn to make a queen. In this case, Fabi is using this pawn for its own moving abilities. He wants to use this extra pawn to make it be known that it's on the board and use it as an attacker. And that's a very, very useful thing to do. Pawns are useful pieces and can be used as attackers as uh, pokers to poke open the king's side here for white. And that's exactly what happens. So after f5, we see queen e5 check, king g2, rook c3, rook f3, trades off one set of rooks, and now rook e7 is black's choice. Fabi continues with rook d5, queen e4 check, king g3, king g7 is black's decision, 
Now, rook d6 makes a threat. Like I said, using this extra pawn uh, as an attacker. Things like f6 are always going to be threatened now. Queen e5 check. And Fabi does a very, very mean thing, and that is hides his king on h4. Uh, and this king is surprisingly resilient on h4. Uh, you can check from this diagonal, but all of these squares seem to be covered. You can check from this diagonal, but like I said, this extra pawn is going to make that difficult. Uh, you can't really check from the file due to the h pawns in the way. So this king, uh, surprisingly safe on h4. And now, unfortunately for black, Yu Yang Yi caves under the pressure, plays g takes f5, tries to regain this pawn, but now Fabi is simply winning with his next move, queen h6. King comes to g8, we see rook d8 check, rook e8, and now rook d7 threatens a checkmate, and after rook e7, this gives Fabi the opportunity he needs to trade into a technically winning king and pawn endgame. Uh, and that is done via queen g5 check, king f7, and then collecting all of the pieces on the e7 square and taking this pawn. And with this extra pawn, this is a very, very simple technical win for white. We see king f6, king g4, king e5, king g5, b5, c3, and here uh, black actually resigns. Uh, play could have continued with something like a6, and after f6, it's very clear that uh, this king will eventually uh, be further out of play uh, thanks to uh, this extra pawn for white. You can imagine even something like this, where white picks up this pawn and will be cleaning, queening with plenty of time to spare. Uh, might have not been the simplest win, but it, it shows that black's position is, is really, really hopeless. Uh, so this is uh, a very, very classy game by Fabi. It shows you how to use an extra pawn to your advantage. Use it as an attacker. Don't just keep it in your back pocket. And this is a very nice win for the world number two. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you in the next episode.